hopefully by now, uh, after our first couple of sessions here talking about the psychology of wealth, uh, you understand, you're buying into, you get this uh, notion that wealth really is a mindset. It's a software, a mental software. Uh, you know, focusing on this is even more, if not more important than any technical training that you're going to receive for a job, for your business, you know, learning um, the tactics and strategies behind whatever it is that you do, uh, because as we mentioned in the first call, like the perfect diet, they all work, but it really comes down to your application of it. You know, how well do you follow the diet? How well do you follow the programs, um, the strategies, the, the tools to, you know, improve your wealth creation? It all comes down to your operating system. And, you know, so the first step, really understanding what that is, knowing what your family of origin software is, your your belief system, uh, you know, these thought patterns and programs, the strategies that you received or that were programmed uh, by family of origin and uh, modified over time, right? Reinforced, challenged, modified. Uh, it, it's really important. You got to start off with getting clear on what your current operating system is and then making choices as to you know where do you make the upgrades uh, what's already serving you well how do we reinforce that how do we enhance that how do we build on that and then looking at what's creating challenges what's creating limitations and what's a specific tool i can do to rewire a thought rewire the mind for uh, abundance for wealth and so you know in regards to your beliefs your, your software around money, uh, you can't put it on a pedestal. Um, you can't put money on a pedestal and worship it, nor can you put it below you and demonize it. You know, we gave some examples about, you know, how looking at uh, old beliefs such as money is the root of all evil uh, or, you know, don't lose your hard-earned money as being examples of, you know, things that could limit you again in your operating system your your programs your strategies for wealth creation uh and, and this isn't about you know these webinars aren't about we gotta focus so intensely on money 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 and uh or um you know again putting it on a pedestal and worshiping it, it it's just an acknowledgement that you know this great zig ziglar quote uh which i love Money isn't the most important thing in life, but, you know, it's reasonably close to oxygen on the gotta have it, right? We, it's just a fact of life. Uh, you need money to pay bills, uh, you know, to get by, to, to just enjoy the simple things. And it's great to, you know, where you might have heard money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Yeah, it, it, it opens up opportunities. It makes life more acceptable accessible you know to allow you to do things uh that maybe you couldn't before so again you know not worshiping it but acknowledging it that it, it is important you know um and if it's in your request you know to the system to have more of it well how do we do that what are the beliefs you have to run you know what are the thoughts you have to have we're going to go deeper into that uh, on this call here so always love to start with some calibration and wouldn't you know my uh, pen is you know I replaced the battery and it's still giving me troubles I don't know what the deal is so um, I won't be handwriting much today but <clears throat> calibrating where you currently are I want you to to look at where you fit on this continuum again looking at a belief system uh, you know we mentioned last time money as flow do you believe that you know do you believe that it's not just a thing it's not just dead presidents on pieces of paper you know it's not just uh you know based on a gold standard it's not just the you know stock market it it's it's not a thing and and even just think about how this whole financial you know, system we have in place now throughout the history of our 
uh, our species, you know, going from a barter system to going to agreeing on this uh, system of coins turning into paper, now moving ever so quickly into more of a digital environment. I, I'm not sure the, the numbers anymore, but something crazy like 70% of all money is just numbers on a computer. It's not real. We, it's, it's made up when you really think about it. Now, it's a collective consciousness thing. It's something we all agree on, right? And that's what makes it real. But, but money, it's, it's not really a thing. Uh, it's flow. It's energy. And uh, I love this metaphor, you know, looking at it as a speedometer of how well you are flowing. So I mentioned last time, you know, are you asking for a fix to the system or a, a fix to the flow of the money coming in? Or are you asking for more of you? Are you asking for more of your flow? versus a fix to something that's, you know, outside of you, outside of your control, you know, and so when you really think of it as a speedometer, you know, a meteor, a, a gauge of how well you're flowing, you know, how fast and efficiently you're wired to this system. Again, the, this planet that we live on, this system that we live in, is designed to give everyone you know, absolutely all of what they request. There's enough resources on the planet for everyone to have what they want. Now, you know, again, we can go into arguments about how some people are born in the less fortunate, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now we're back to the resources versus resourcefulness. How resourceful of you are, how, how resourceful are you versus, you know, what are the resources that were given to you? And we have examples on the opposite side that, you know, lottery winners, you know, we've talked and we've given that example a few times now, 80% or more end up going bankrupt. So it's not about the resources. It's the operating system. It's your resourcefulness and how well you're wired to the system, how well you flow. So if you want to go faster, you know, how do you put your foot on the gas? Well, let's look at that. Now, you, you know, it's part, partly the challenge with tapping into, you know, greater abundance, having a greater flow, uh, and going deeper into our collective models of the world is that we're in large part a very scarcity-based culture. And that has deep evolutionary reasons, and, and for the most part, they're good reasons. It's designed to protect you. It's designed to keep you safe, designed, you know, for those times of droughts, for the times when resources aren't plentiful. You know, scarcity can be an effective strategy, right? You want to save uh, or, you know, make sure, take caution in case there's you know, n not resources, right? Not not an abundance of resources. So they're well-meaning programs, just like old software in general. It's designed for uh, for safety. It's designed for comfort. It wants to protect you, but it's not what gets you to these outrageous wealth places that we're talking about. So, you know, is is this scarcity-based mindset? Is that really what holds us back, or, you know? Is it something else? What, what else goes into this? And uh, again, when looking at your self, your patterns and programs, are you scarce? Do you run scarcity programs? Or are you abundant? You know, why and when does that show up? Are you scarce in some settings, but abundant in others? And especially in the 10, these challenging moments, the 10% of life when we're being tested, the world, you know, seemingly is going against us. Things aren't going our way, right? People are being mean. The economy is, right? The stock market is. The housing market is. All these headwinds that we come across throughout life, the 10%, is that when you fall back into scarcity? Because that's, remember, when most people will fall back on what they know, they'll fall back to old patterns, you know, fall back into safety and comfort, you know, preserve. 
and, and not practice these new mindsets, these new strategies of abundance because it goes against everything. It goes against all of your old software, your being, it goes against your being of what you've been taught and programmed to do. But it's the absolute time where you must run the new software, you must run the new thoughts and belief systems because that's where growth is made. That's where the software gets installed. So, you know, we've alternated in our discussion here in the in this month about psychology of wealth, you know, between just wealth and abundance and uh, as I mentioned in the email, outrageous wealth and abundance. And when you think about that, when you think about those two, which one has more ca cachet with you? You know, are you just looking for just wealth or, or, or are you truly asking for outrageous? And what does that even mean? You know, does that create excitement? Does that create goosebumps for you? You know, and know that both are equally true. It's what you set as your standard, what you set as your request to the system, your ask. And know that, you know, anything that is not, anytime, you know, scarcity comes up, old software comes up because it's just as true, becomes an unask for this abundance place that you're wanting. So, you know, what if, and then this, this is again, anything highlighted in orange, this is a journaling question. This is a homework opportunity. This is something for you to work on that's going to drastically modify. One, it's going to give you consciousness about your software, but it's going to, it serves as a opportunity to rewire your thoughts around this. And so what if you never worried about, you know, money? What if you never worried about a potential lack of or scarcity of and acted truly as if you were completely abundant and acted abundantly even in in the 10 challenging moments do you think you'd be better off or worse off than you are now because i can tell you already you know the next time you enter a in the 10 moment a, a challenging moment and you're going to want to be abundant that's when you're going to see and you're going to want to pay attention to these old fears that come up. Well, you know, what if, and if I'm just this abundant person and I'm just giving, 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 you know, am, am I gonna now fear, well, is, is something gonna come back to me? You know, is it gonna be returned? Am I gonna uh, eventually not have enough? You know, what, what if? That's when these old psychology, these old fears start to creep up. And, and again, they're well-meaning designed to keep you safe. So, you know, are you asking for outrageous wealth and not just wealth? Are you asking for large piles of money just dumping in your, you know, bank account just flowing to you far beyond what your thermostat is set for? And when we talk about the thermostat, I think I may have mentioned in one of the previous ones that this range that we're comfortable in you know, again, there's the key word there. Just as you set your thermostat in your home for a temperature that's comfortable, if it falls a little below that, you turn, you, you pump the heat on, you know, gets a little hot, turn the AC on, bring it back down. The same holds true, you know, this phenomenon in human psychology that we have this range we're comfortable in, you know, and let's say, and just to put it in another example or metaphor, you know, you've been working hard, you know, busting your butt, you know, in your business or your job, you know, you, you gave an A one week. Well, most people won't because, you know, they spent a lot of time and energy and mostly energy in their, you know, gave it their all. Well, then, you know, once the money comes in a little bit and you had a good week or you had a good month, you, you know, rest on your loyal, laurels. Say, oh, I deserve a break. You know, I did good this, this month. So you'll, you know, maybe dial it back to a C, you know, average on, on, on your performance, right? And so we hold this thermostat level and think of if that thermostat was really set to outrageous versus 
you know, above average. And what difference that would make for you day to day, week to week, you know, month to month. So you know, what holds us back from really doing this, asking for outrageous? Well, you know, one, who wouldn't want this? Who, who doesn't want out, outrageous wealth? I, I haven't met anyone that hears that and says, yeah, no, I, I don't really want that. And not, not for me. I don't want more money than I have. You know, generally, maybe I'll just get a, yeah, it'd be nice. But what holds you back? It's really only two things. You know, not only is there a, maybe a belief running that you can't have it, this hidden parentheses that says, yeah, I get that that's possible for other people. I get Warren Buffett or Elon Musk or, you know, all these great people. I get that's possible for them, but yeah, just not me. I know me. I know my limitations with that. I, I don't think that's very possible. I, yeah, I don't, I don't believe I can have that. Uh, or, you know, to even want that will penalize you, right? Whether it's a, in an outside in, what will people think of me? You know, or maybe it's more taxes or, you know, whatever else might exist in your imagination as to what would possibly happen, happen with more money, right? Maybe I lose friends or all people want of me is just my money and, you know, or they, they maybe they think I'm greedy because I just, I say, I, you know, I want more money. So it's really only these two things. And so in neural psychology and the work we do here, we can either raise the bottom, right? So going back to this thermostat, we can raise this lower average of, let's say, performance, you know, or we can blow off the top, you know, lift the top, tap into your potential, you know. So most do neither because, again, they don't want to fall from where they are. There's a fear that maybe I'll lose something, you know, maybe to take this risk, right? I'm There's something I might lose or, you know, it's just I have to proceed with caution because at least I've got the predictability, you know, where I am now. I can forecast tomorrow and a month from now, a year from now, you know, where I'm at is good. Good's good enough, right? You know, so we love predictability. At least you have, you know, risk management because as you get older, you know, there's more things to lose. You have a mortgage, you have a car payment, you have college tuitions, you have all these things, you know, that you've accumulated over time and, you know, to take a different action or do something else and maybe it's too too risky, you know, to pursue a, a dream, per, pursue something that I really love and be abundant with my time and, and energy and something that I love and, you know, maybe not do something that I've been doing for 20, you know, 30 years. But again, it's predictable. I know what I'm getting. I get my paycheck. You know, I, I, I there's these risk management strategies and asset protection strategies that come into play because again as as you're younger you don't have as much to lose you're willing to take risks and what's ironic is that it was the risky you know thinking or strategies that got you to where you were you, you know you, you took chances early on and got you where you are in the first place but we start to abandon these things you know we go more into gotta keep what i have again the part of scarcity mindset don't lose proceed with caution but really think about this and remember language is so very important here when you look at caution and you look at this as a strategy is it a bad thing well no that's not what we're saying but you have to understand this from a reality creation standpoint and you look at the definition here, care taken to avoid dangers or mistakes. And my OGs here will know and, and immediately recognize that, yeah, this is an away pattern. It's 
focused on what you don't want. It's focused on avoiding pain. This is not how the top 10% of the world in terms of success, and this isn't just about money. This is everything, health, you know, love, leadership, everything. Top 10%, they, they, don't, they don't do this. They don't, this isn't a frame of thinking for them. It's I want what I want. You know, it's even back to the four-year-old you. It's in everyone's DNA. Four-year-olds, they just, they laugh at a 10, cry at a 10, play at a 10. Man, they're just, they fall in love with one toy, play with it, get sick of it, fall in love with another toy. They just want what they want. They want to ride the two-wheeler. They don't say, you know, they, they try the two-wheeler, fall down, and say, you know, my elbows got all scraped up. I don't know, I'm kind of over this two-wheeler crap. I'm going to go back to my tricycle. No four-year-old does that. They want what they want. And so, you know, we're not saying proceed without caution. This is not that. Because most will hear this and perceive it and assume, uh, you know, be reckless. No. It's just we would not frame this conversation. We would not frame your this search for personal wealth and success as being cautious. Because remember... It took a, a, a relative risk or some level of risk to accumulate assets in the first place, to get the success in the first place. So it's, it's just a different frame when you proceed with a, perf a fierce commitment to win, you know, to wanting what you want, to want the outrageous wealth, place that you want, you know, to advance, to grow, to learn you know, to get your outcomes. And then caution just occurs naturally where it should. Right? I'd rather, I'd rather have, I, I say this all the time, I'd rather have you be somewhat reckless and I'd have to dial you back, you know? Let's think about maybe implementing some caution strategies versus, you know, trying to dial it up because it's, again, challenging to go from this caution place maybe that you're used to and now start venturing into a risky arena. It's dangerous, right? There's potential failures. There's, you know, potential unwanted things that are happening. But this is where everything dramatically shifts in your probabilities that you win. Go back to the don't spill the milk example. The more you focus on not spilling the more you're enhancing the probability that's going to happen versus pour carefully. Oh, now you're thinking differently. It's a different frame of mind. Pour slowly. Hold with two hands. You know, so it complete, completely train, changes the strategies and you win more and you win outrageously more and big. So is outrageous a reasonable request? Now, that's an ironic question, outrageous and reasonable. They, they kind of go against each other, but when you frame it differently, doesn't it seem more reasonable to approach this as outrageous just versus just an incremental, you know, I just want okay wealth. And, and here's what success laws teach us. We, we cover this in so many other tools. You know, when you do this, a fierce commitment to win, thinking that of this as outrageous, you'll have far more in life than you want than than not. And while you'll occasionally lose, and it is a law that the more action you take, the greater failures you will have. And we have tools for this. While they're not true losses, The, if you record them and you have great failure management strategies in place, you know that failures, they just become part of the growth, you know, because there is lessons. Because it's just the greater success that I want, the greater failures I need to learn how to get there. Because it's part of the equation. And they're no longer failure means I'm a failure or I don't like failure. Failure sucks and I hate it. And 
it, it, it brings everything that you're looking for along with the money and the wealth. So this is a huge but. You know, you have to frame this in the form of an outrageous request in order for this to be real. Again, this isn't just incremental improvements because we can bulge out of that comfort zone that you're in and it'll, you know, it'll feel like a win. It'll feel good for a little bit, but it, it's not going to be this quantum leap, this quantum growth that we're talking about here. It's not going to be the outrageous wealth that we're talking about here, you know, and if you don't do this, you're just the lottery winner who goes bankrupt because you haven't upgraded the psychology. You haven't upgraded the operating system for outrageous wealth. And you never really entered the game to begin with. So this is why this is so very important that you think about these questions. Write your answers down. Do the financial model of the world. Write, and I mentioned in the first call of the series, writing everything that money means to you so you can get a great understanding about your current operating system and, and see where you can make upgrades, make improvements, make adjustments. And please, you know, go into this with a great request for outrageous and a fierce commitment and belief that you'll get everything that you're requesting, especially when you have these great tools in place to manage, you know, all the failures, all the you know hard times, all, all all the lessons that come with it, and it's only gonna enhance and supplement your growth on just on a personal level. You know, this isn't just about money. Remember, this is part of the operating system. So these strategies go into everything that we're doing here, and you'll see it improves your relationships, it, it improves your health when you approach it like this.